Coming up on the Globe Sports Corner, we take a look at the athletic trainers here at Goshen College. Zach Begley talks with Ben Longyear about his performance for the baseball team this season, and Nick Bank tells us about the Goshen College throwing team and the success they've had all year. All that coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome to another episode of the Globe Sports Corner. I'm William Troyer. When it comes to the athletes here at Goshen College, some people you may not notice as much are the athletic trainers here at Goshen College. They do their best to keep our athletes injury-free and healthy. Benjamin Cotton has more on the story. Goshen College Athletics provides 16 teams for the Maple Leafs. As one of the smaller schools in the Crossroads League, there's only one team of two who protect and prime healthy athletes for every practice and game. Erica Alberton and Emily Osborne are the heads of the training staff. We question how do you manage to protect the large amount of athletes? I'd say that's probably one of our biggest challenges. So just having Emily and myself and then our 300 athletes. So we really try to direct people, kind of like air traffic control, especially like during this room can sometimes be, you know, like 50 to 80 people. So trying to like triage if we need to do that, figure out what's most important. Um, but for me as a head athletic trainer, like having the administrative side is really important. So the pre-paperwork at the beginning of the year so I spend a lot of time in the summer when people aren't here, like putting together the emergency action plans, doing trainings like mental health training, uh, talking with all the coaches so they know what to do, and then CPR and first aid. So the coaches, they're the ones out at practice, so they have to know what to do right away, and I'm responsible for training them. I found that communication is the biggest thing um, and multitasking. Um, so Eric and I work as a team. Uh, we cut for everybody, and so one day she could see one person, I could see the next. So it's big to communicate between the two of us what we're doing with patients. Um, and documentation is also helpful so we can know what the other person did. Or we can look back on our notes and be like, oh, this is what we did with this person on this day. Um, and then also uh, multitasking. So we can have one person doing rehab, doing joint moves or ultrasound or something else with somebody else. Um, and you can kind of coordinate things um, when multiple people are in here. Um, and also I found it helpful to like shortest task first, so tape someone's ankle, then set someone up on STEM, um, and then maybe do an evaluation after that has been the most helpful with so many athletes and just two of us. Both Erica and Emily mentioned the relationship they have built with the GC athletes. Um, so I've been here for almost two years and uh, how I build relationships is by getting to know the athletes more on a personal level. So um, getting to know their names, uh, getting to know like what their majors are, what they like, what they don't like, um, and just kind of get to know them on a deeper level so that when they come in here, they know who I am, they um, can feel comfortable around me so that when they have a problem, they can be like, hey, Emily, I have this going on. Can you help me out? They have that trust there built already so that it's not as scary to come in here, it's not as intimidating. So I was start my fourth year in August, um, and working with students is definitely my favorite part about athletic training, especially like in a small collegiate setting like this. So I was a student athlete and got hurt, that's kind of how I got into athletic training. Um, and so my athletic trainer was there for the injury and then the rehab and my return to play. And so for me, like getting to know the student athletes is really important, whether that's just like seeing people across campus and saying hi, um, knowing people's names and kind of a part of their story. And then being able to share a little bit about myself or my knowledge or, you know, different aspects of athletic training. And so being the expert and conveying that to people is really important to start the like trust factor. Without trust, I want to be able to treat any of the student athletes. And so building trust and having relationships with the students, um, very important part. The Goshen College athletic teams are the stars under the lights, but it is the work and rehab of Eric and Emily before the game to keep them performing at a high level. For Globe Sports, I'm Benjamin Cotton. The athletic trainers continue their excellent work at getting athletes back to their playing fields. When we return, Zach Begley will be talking to Ben Longiger to talk about the season with the Maple Leafs. the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago, it's Goshen College. 
Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one -on -one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. I'm Zachariah Begley, and with me today is Ben Longenegger, junior at center fielder for the Goshen College baseball team. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, this is your third season on the baseball team, and obviously it's a new season, and you had some goals coming in, as every player does when they come into a season. Mm -hmm. What were your goals? Well, as a team, our goals this season were to build off of last year. We had a lot of success last year. We didn't go as far in the playoffs as we wanted, but we were really, comp we were really happy with how we did, how we performed in the regular season. We just wanted to build on that, keep working hard, with the new guys we brought in, you know, we felt like we could have a lot of success, and we know we can still. And that's what we're trying to do, just build off last year's success and keep up and improve. So you're one of the top hitters on the team, uh, leading in, you're in top three in multiple different hitting categories. What have, you, what have you done at the plate as sort of an approach to, you know, do well at the plate and get hits and hit homers and score runs for your team? I mean, hitting at the top of the lineup, you know, my job, like I put it on, I put a lot on myself to kind of be a catalyst for the offense, you know, kind of jumpstart us, you know, driving in, driving and getting on base, driving in runs, and all that stuff, you know, all that. It's really important to the team success, so I just try and I try and do that as much as I can going out there. Is there anything in particular to look at when you're at the plate? Like, are you looking for a particular fastball, breaking ball, or looking for something inside, outside? Do you have a particular um, sweet spot in the zone? It, all, it always depends, depending on the situation. But for me personally, like, I'm a big fastball hitter. I'm looking, I'm looking to get ahead in the count and try and get the pitcher to throw me a fastball in the zone that I can drive. That's usually my approach going up to the plate. So your team is halfway through the year. It's, we're into April, and you're sitting in the eighth and final spot to re make the tournament in the Crossroads League. What do you need to do going forward to continue and get in the playoffs and make something happen? I mean, yes. Well, so far this season, you know, we've had some things that haven't gone our way, which is why we found ourselves in this eighth spot. Yeah. But the eighth spot is still a playoff spot, and all you need to do is yeah. get in the playoffs. And once you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. So I'm really excited about the second half of this year. Um, I know what this team is capable of. We all know what we're capable of. And we're just going to keep working hard and rooting for each other. And we know that if we do that, stuff's going to fall in line, and we can have a chance to do some really good things come, going down the stretch. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. When we return, I'll be with Nick Bank to talk about his team success this track season. That's coming up on the Sports Corner. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station, it adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. I'm here with Nick Banky, assistant track and field coach for Goshen College. Coach, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, the season seems to be going well for your throwers. Uh, what are your thoughts on how they've been doing so far? Well, you know, each year we put a very large focus on the Crossroad League Championship. This year is no different. During the indoor season this year, we had a very strong showing in the, in the throws. Best here at Goshen since I've been on staff. You know, Danae Lipinski, who's a junior, placed ninth in the weight throw. She missed scoring in that event by one place. Um, she also placed 10th in the shot put and missed finals by two centimeters. Uh, Jacob Gerber, who's a sophomore, placed fourth in the weight throw, scored five points for the team, placed 11th in the shot put, missed finals by two competitors. Suzette Rodriguez, who's a sophomore, placed 12th in the shot put, missing finals by three competitors. You know, she had an awesome performance in the weight throw, when, and she ended up breaking the school record, qualifying to the NAI uh, Indoor National Championship, mm -hmm. and ultimately ended up winning the event at conference. And so when Suzette wins, uh, you know, conference as a sophomore, hits an NAI national championship mark and scores the majority of the women's points at conference, and Jacob places fourth and scores 20% mm -hmm. of the points at conference, 
and Danae was extremely close at scoring points in the shot and the weight. It's really hard to be upset with performances, you know, from this group's in terms of an indoor season. In terms of outdoor, so far, uh, I'm super excited for my athletes to take advantage of their training. You know, we started this year out at the Polar Bear Invite at IWU, where we uh, where both Jacob and Suzette had big PRs in the hammer and the discus. Suzette mm -hmm. actually won the hammer throw against a very good group of girls. Um, this past weekend, um, Saturday, we just comp competed at Taylor, uh, where Suzette and Jacob also had another set of PRs in the hammer and the discus. Jacob actually ended up placing second in the hammer throw. Uh, he lost to his older brother, who's a senior at Trine, but... Um, he had a very big throw and is now qualified for the NAI Outdoor National Championship. So I think overall this year, we've done some pretty, you know, pretty big things so far, and I'm super happy for all the for all my athletes, and you know, they're getting a lot of well-deserved recognition throughout the school, conference, and the track and field community. So you started about three years ago here at the school. How do you see the t growth in the team during your time here? Well, you know, our throws program today is nothing like what it was two years ago. Um, we changed everything we're doing from putting academics first to lifting workouts to the throwing workouts to focusing on leadership skills. Um, at the start of year two, you know, we hit kind of hit a reset button on our throws program. All of the upperclassmen had graduated, um, and all I had were freshman athletes. Um, I knew this was going to be my only shot, really, to uh, kind of change the environment and you know change the culture of the throws program. So. Um, you know, we did that, and the kids are absolutely striving in the new environment. What improvements could you see uh, that could be made to the team still? Well, I, I think we tend to be one event-minded sometimes. You know, I've really been challenging my athletes to get excited and passionate about some of their other events, you know, the non-primary events that they, that they compete in. You know, there's still some technical improvements that could be made within their throws, especially in the shot and the disc. And, you know, as the season starts to close, we'll, we'll change our mindset and competition to be less performance-based and more competition-based, you know, com competing for a place versus competing for a distance, you know, so. So, Coach, what are you looking forward to most the rest of the season? Well, I, I can't tell you how excited I am for the rest of the season. You know, I w I'm really looking forward to see how it turns out. You know, we have three big meets left for the year. We have Little State at Iwu uh, Easter weekend. We have conference, which is a two-day meet at IWU, the 2nd and 3rd of March. And then the NAI National Championship um, is in Gulf Shores, Alabama at the end of May, which Jake qualified for so far. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how the team competes in the hammer throw at Little State this year. You know, they're really turning some heads this year, so it'll be really awesome to see how they finish against a tough group of competitors from all over the state of Indiana. We're really, uh, we're going to have a really awesome hammer competition this year at conference, both men's and women's. Uh, it's really close right now. Jacob's leading a conference by about four feet right now, and Suzette's in third place as it stands right now. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to see how they can get out of their comfort zones a bit, especially in the discus, to see if we can score some points in the discus too. Um, Suzette is really close to hitting the qualifying standard in the women's hammer throw. And, you know, I'm also super excited to see how we how well Danae will rise to the occasion at conference. You know, she's she's due for some big throws and and can score in more than one event as well. So, um, you know, lastly, the thing that I'm really excited for is uh, to see if we can get Danae or Suzette qualified for the national championship along with Jake. Um, and I'm also excited to see how Jake's going to com compete and perform at that platform. So, Well, Coach, thank you again for joining us. When we come back, William, look ahead at your Maple Leafs in action for this week. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career.
Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. Let's have a look at the Maple Leaf schedule this week. Today, the baseball team will be at Spring Arbor University to compete against the Cougars. That game will start at 3 p.m. The softball team is also in action as they travel to Huntington for a doubleheader against the Foresters. The first game begins at 3 p.m. On Friday, the baseball team returns home for a conference doubleheader against Huntington with the first pitch to start at 3 p.m. The softball team will be traveling to Fort Wayne for a conference doubleheader against the St. Francis Cougars. First game starts at 3 p.m. The Goshen race walking team will compete at home starting at 11 a.m. this Saturday. The baseball team will compete in a doubleheader this Saturday taking on Huntington University. The first game is set for 1 p.m. Finally, the softball team will be up against the 11th ranked Indiana Westland Wildcats for a conference doubleheader. First game starts at 1 p.m. That wraps up this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Be sure to check out our website at globeradio.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on the Globe Sports Corner.